Hey y'all, this is David, the Georgia photographer, and today I'm gonna to finally do the review on my Leica TL. Then it's like a special niche kind of camera that Leica produced. So let's get into this. Okay, so what I've done is I've come on a little photo walk with it as well. This camera is kind of special in that Leica kind of moved away from their usual mode of manufacturing cameras you know they're big in the rangefinder community and then they've gotten and they've made slrs so they've got cameras with viewfinders electronic viewfinders and they'd never done one that was missing a viewfinder no viewfinder on this camera whatsoever this camera is really interesting in that it has basically an on off toggle switch it has a shutter button in the toggle switch it has a video record button because it does video. And then it has two thumb wheels and they're unmarked. Now, of course, it has a hot shoe. And if I'm right, the, the Visiflex that fits the M's also fits this camera. One of the things special to this camera that isn't on any of the other rangefinders is it has a built in flash. I don't know that I've ever used it, but it's kind of a neat little widget. All right, it's kind of tough finding a spot that's not like overexposing or excessively backlit, or it's just like, I can't find a good spot to set the camera up so I can just talk to you guys. <sighs> I've walked like seven blocks, still ain't found a decent spot. So I'm down here at the aquarium now. I'm gonna grab a cup of coffee and go over here to the little aquarium park. Pretty sure I'll find a spot over there. Yeah. Got a cup of coffee at Starbucks over by the rock climbing gym. And I have officially got to come out of this jacket. It has gotten considerably warmer than when I got here this morning. Like it's warmed up a lot. Woo! Now, what I wanted to do is I'm currently running the 23 millimeter Summicron L lens. Lenses are kind of not what we're talking about anyway, but what I was saying was it has it only has like Just a couple of external controls you have the on off switch Which is also the shutter button then you have these two unmarked dials and that's because they change jobs depending on the mode and shutter priority It is this is the shutter and this is the exposure compensation and it's all touchscreen interface. Okay, so you have this is the modes you can pick, and they are program, aperture priority, shutter priority, manual, and scene. Scene modes is like, you know, cloudy sky, mountains. Um, I like shutter priority and manual most of the time. Aperture priority is okay if you're wanting to shoot at a certain, like, exposure level. Like, today I'm running shutter priority because I'm wanting to freeze action good, so I can actually just adjust it. And if my f-stop gets to be, like, too big, I'll just, like, back off the shutter speed some that'll close the aperture down automatically the original TL is a 16 megapixel I believe the TL2 is 24 another feature that this camera has that I like over my CL is this little door when you open this little door you have the memory card well right beside the memory card you have a micro USB port you can in camera charge the battery through this micro USB port that's a big deal to me because on the CL, I don't have any USB ports whatsoever. So you have to take the charger if you travel to charge batteries at night or whatever. But with this one, I can charge in the truck while I'm driving. Or, you know, I can in camera charge. Maybe say we're gonna eat lunch somewhere and, I, and I'm down to one battery and I wanna top one off while we're eating lunch. I can stick that dead battery in it, plug in the USB cable in the truck let it be charging while we're eating and, and put a significant amount of charge in it. Now, some people will complain that in-camera charging is not good for it or good for the battery, but I haven't really had much trouble with it. Another thing I've learned about this camera is the battery compartment is kind of interesting. The external portion of the bottom of the battery is the bottom of the camera. So you've got this little flange surface. I have a spare battery that is not a Leica battery. I bought off of Amazon and I just bought the battery. This is an official Leica battery, probably the one that came with the camera. 
it works just fine, but I always like having more than one battery. But the neat thing about it is the battery just doesn't fall out. You throw this little lever and the battery pops up about an eighth of an inch. And then you touch it and it unlatches and then you pull it out. That way when you hit the lever, it don't just fly out of the camera. Then you just drop the new one in, lock it, and you're back in business. Super fast battery changes. I kind of like that about this camera. It's really simple on the batteries. But the part about this camera that really, really makes it cool is the interface. It's all touch screen. Well, other than these two or three rudimentary dials on the top. But you have three buttons on the side and then you have the main touch screen body itself. To review photos, you slide down from the top and it brings up the photos you took. I just took this photo of this couple they were right here doing selfies and we come to a mutual agreement. I'd take one with their phone if they'd let me take one with my camera. But yeah, and then you swipe through them just like any traditional uh, touch screen operated device. It's the same type of um, operation. And then you can do some stuff with the photos over here. There's a few options. And then you swipe down again, goes back to the camera. If you want full screen display, the little sidebar, you swipe across it and it takes it away and you get a full screen display. If you want the options on the side, then you just swap back this way, brings them back. If you swap down from the top, it locks those buttons out so that you don't inadvertently touch one of those functions at some point and do something. And then you swap up to unlock them. And the top one is your mode of operation, shutter, aperture, manual, what have you. And then it's got a return button. The middle one is your favorites menu. It's on its own. Now, once you go to favorites, if you want the more exhaustive list of options, there's a little gear and a wrench and screwdriver icon, a little tool icon. You hit it and it brings up all of the functions. But most of these are set and forget and you don't need access to them all the time. So you have your little ones that you do use in the little camera menu. And then down at the bottom is the information display. I can turn on the rule of thirds grid. I can turn on the histogram or I can just take away everything except for the focus point and then bring it back to the information display. This is a really interesting little design camera. It's got a little tally light down here in the corner, so if you're shooting video, it's got a little red light, and it also glows when it's um, charging, so you can see it's charging. It has two mics on the top, so I'm assuming it records in stereo when you shoot video with it. And it's an SD card, takes regular SD cards. Let's get some photos of this camera and show you what it'll do. I'm shooting in black and white. It shoots in color too. And the colors look like any Leica colors from a digital camera that Leica makes because it uses the same basic software and their algorithms for their color science. So if you shoot in color JPEG, you're gonna get those beautiful rich Leica colors. I've done it with this one. But I kind of like shooting black and white with this camera. It kind of gives me that sort of range finder-ish feel, kind of old school vibe with an iPhone glued to the back. So it's an interesting little camera. And it's a very small footprint, it's not very big at all. And it's very comfortable in the hand. It has a machined aluminum housing. It's just, it's just kind of a well-made piece of kit. Everybody that's handled it's liked it. It's, it's real intuitive to use. It doesn't take a lot of like figuring out to figure out how to work the camera. You can get it up and going really quick. So let's go get some photos. So why am I going to sell it? Because it's got two fatal flaws. One is the lack of an EVF. The camera is real easy to use. Other than in bright light, I can't, I can't see the screen well. And with my reading glasses, kind of necessity, I'm constantly seeing, I'm, I'm crunching, crunching my neck back to look through the readers to see the display. That's the biggest problem with it because with the CL having an, a viewfinder, I just bring it up. I typically look over my glasses and look through the viewfinder over my glasses and it's real easy to use. All of my other cameras have viewfinders and I use them that way. The other problem with this camera is the autofocus is um, good, but it's kind of slow. 
So if you want to like get a action shot, I kind of normally will pre-focus on the ground near where I expect the action to happen. And then I'll half press the shutter and hold that, that focus and then recompose and wait for like the person to run through the frame or whatever and grab the, the action that way. You know, when you use manual glass, the lack of an EVF or a button to initiate focus magnification so I can get in and detail my focus is the next gripe. Yeah, you can focus it on the back and see on the screen what you're getting. Problem is, is that I can't really tell if I'm sharp in focus or not. And typically, unless I've stopped down to like F8, I'm not. I kind of miss focus pretty regular at large apertures with, without focus magnification and peaking enabled makes it a lot easier still. But at least with magnification, I can see if it's sharp. I can zoom in basically on a section of the frame and get it. But I can't do that with this camera. That's why you see me using this little 23 millimeter Simicron. So, I'm about to box up a bunch of stuff like Bill did and probably send it up to Roberts. I'm going to start that conversation with them once I gather up all the stuff because I've got a different camera that I want. And I'm going to basically liquidate this little guy and turn it into the other camera that I am wanting. That's the only two real problems with this little camera for me. Now, if you've got good eyes, or if you don't have to look through bifocal readers to see your display, you know, and you can just hold it up and shoot. It's a great camera. It's a great camera for someone who's wanting something more than their smartphone, but is driven like their smartphone, if that makes sense. But it gives you the room to expand your photography kind of background. You know, you can put different lenses on it so you can get different focal lengths. You know, if you want to shoot super wide, telephoto, what have you, it, it gives you that option. And it's great for like just daily life snapshots. It works really great for that. Plus that whole pop-up flash allows you to get, you know, family photos, uh, the birthday pictures kind of stuff, you know. It's, it's good for stuff like that. It's a great little camera for just general purpose photography around, around your world, documenting your life around you. You know, if you want to start getting into more artistic stuff, it gives you that room to reach out from where you are. Plus, it shoots video. It does a little bit of video. And, and the video is reasonably good. So with all that said, this is David, the Georgia photographer. And until next time, get your camera out and go take a picture with it. All right, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.